Hey everyone, today we're gonna to come to you with a, with, what is it called? A, a weather update, actually. No, 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 not a weather update, but a um, public service, a PSA about weather, preparedness, all that fun stuff. We're on the coast. It's time to get prepared. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna be talking all things weather today. One of our not so favorite topics, but if you're not from here, you probably need more information because you might decide you actually don't want to live here. I'm not sure. Um, but the goal and of this channel- In case you do live here and want to leave, we sell homes too. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, good point, Fred. Okay, so before we get into it, go ahead, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell. We do release a new video every single Friday. You know that by now, I'm sure. Uh, also, get our phone number and our email address. As Brett mentioned, we are realtors. Uh, so we do promote this channel. Um, as a helpful resource to potential buyers and people looking to move here from all over the world. And we do get people reaching out to us from everywhere. So thank you for all the support. I got a call from the North Pole last week. <laughs> Santa Claus? Is he coming to town? It sounded like him. <laughs> sounded okay. like he had a good beard. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Okay, so when we think of weather in Houston, we, we think of hurricanes. And usually about this time of year, you start seeing all the digital signage and all the billboards on the freeway. It says, okay, be prepared, hurricane season, right? So if you never want to experience a hurricane, I would just say Houston is not for you because we've lived through quite a few. In fact, one of the earliest ones that we can probably remember, well, you barely were here, but you made it in right in time for Alicia. Oh yeah. Uh, back in 1983. I believe. So Brett, Brett was a newbie at that point. Um, then of course we had Rita, right? Following the coattails. The of seas were angry that day, my friend. <laughs> um, and then we had, you know, Ike back in, uh, what was that? 2008. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then oh, yeah. the one that we're just notorious for at this point is Hurricane Harvey. And of course, when we're dealing with buyers, they're like, was the home, you know, flooded during Hurricane Harvey? That's like the number one question we get, which is why we did a separate video on that. But we digress. But the point here is that there are hurricanes. They happen. We're not immune to them. So we thought we would start this video off by talking about just what it means to be prepared and ready for a hurricane should you live here. So, Brett. I wasn't in Boy Scouts, but I know their motto is always be prepared. There right? you go. That's so good. that's what it is. It's about hurricane, tropical storm. We've had some yep. tropical storms that just like come in and just hover. And that's where the danger comes yeah. in, especially in Houston. Like um, Galveston, right, all on the coast, the high winds are really notorious for knocking out power. Um, right. You, you, you know, but when you get a little further inland, like Houston, I mean, most of the areas we deal with are 60, 70. You're up in the Northwest in spring. I'm kind of in Sugar Land. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's not as much the actual coastal or kind of like the water surge. Um, it's more these the storms that stop and hover and just dump dump you know rain mm -hmm. so that's kind of where but you know we reach out you know we we work in galveston port boulevard um freeport you know mm -hmm. if you're on the coast then obviously there's just that added extra element just because you're so close yeah. to the gulf um but um in preparation you want to have a few things that you know you have a plan of action in right. place because if you look out the window and see it's a little too late to start thinking about what to do at that point so um you know obviously know where um, evacuation routes and of course days before I mean it's it's like an event it's like the world not the world series but I mean like the new 24-hour news cycle yeah. I will give them this the news and even if it's nationwide news even they're in New York and Manhattan like what what's at the top of the hour and like that thing that's brewing in the Gulf that's top that's let's all you know send the, send the the reporter out to you know wade in the water with their rubber boots and the you know um, so we so have the, benefits of living in 2021 yeah, so, in this century where we have access to news like poor people in Galveston back in early 1900 they had no way of knowing that a hurricane was coming and they were just decimated so at least we can be prepared so i think that's a good point brett just be prepared have a plan especially if you have a family i mean we both have children you, you know if your children are older talk to them about what that plan is right? and i'm not i, I kind of am a prepper you know but but i'm not like to the point but you know if you have things that that don't have um expiration dates like obviously toilet paper or canned goods 
hey, when it's March or April or May down here, you, you may want to keep just a little bit more, a little higher inventory level. Stock up usually, on water. Yes, yeah, water, like toilet paper, um, kind of things that, you, you know, that, that, that could run in short supply, especially with the 24-hour news cycle and Facebook. And like, oh my gosh, the shelves are empty. It's too late then to start thinking. Yeah. So, so the, especially with baby food, formula, um, I have a little one and, you know, we've gone through a couple different events and it's like, Glad we have a lot of infamil. Um, so, so you know, just keeping a little bit, not to the point where no one else has stuff to buy, but just for your like, own family. Don't, maybe don't maybe stock things. up just a little Toilet bit more. Toilet paper is no joke, though, because people were calling 911 here during Harvey, and they were like, this is not an emergency. But, I don't know, depending on and your situation. People outside of Houston are watching this. They're embarrassing us. <laughs> sorry. Oh, man. I, I, didn't know, I didn't know about that. That was not me or any of my friends. So he says. Um, so another thing in terms of being prepared, if you do need to evacuate, and a lot of times people do need to leave their homes, be thinking about what it is that you really need to take with you. You wanna travel light, obviously. You can't take everything. Um, and one thing here that I pulled out, we actually got this bag from an event, and it's called an emergency document bag. Yours might look a little different. It's basically a glorified oversized Ziploc bag. But inside of it, I have birth certificates, passports, social security cards, things that would be very, very difficult He's like, and it's open. It's not even shut. It's, I don't even think it can shut. It's ripped. No, it's not. Yeah. I have other ones. Okay, so I'll transfer my documents over after this video Just so that I can be pre uh, prepared. Um, but this is really important. Also, you know, I think so many people now have photos and whatnot backed up to a cloud, but I would say if you have like jump drives or things like that just have things backed up take those things you know i mean you can't take like probably a box of printed photos i don't know obviously if you have pets too this is really important to think about make sure you have a plan for them i know in one hurricane it was really difficult for people to take animals and animals are our family right so be thinking about them too right? we're like yeah and even if you this is totally amber her middle name is spreadsheet <laughs> so if if even if you want to get like a condensed like a bullet point kind of list of things that you need to um, your priorities list um, we have uh, from our good friends at Reliant NRG mm -hmm. our um, electricity provider yep. that we partner with in our office and who I use personally Reliant mm -hmm. um, we have kind of just a little bullet point kind of um, hurricane preparedness guide mm -hmm. you can use this for other natural disasters or any other potential weather events um, and now the new thing in Texas is our electric grid right ERCOT or whatever so um, if there's going to be extended amount of time where the grid is down and you don't have electricity at your home and you don't have a whole home generator, um, this list could help there too. So we, we will upload this and we'll have yes. this as part of in the comment section. We'll yep. either link the PDF um, just for a quick little list of things and you can modify it, copy and paste some stuff, but make it, make it, you know, that way you have like, hey, um, let's go to our, my, my Dropbox and see like, oh yeah, yeah, those are the things we want to make sure we stock mm -hmm. up on. These are the main things, you know, um, mm -hmm. Fido's little bed and, and get some Alpo, you know, what, whatever for your dog, your, 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 your kids, whatever the most important things are. Um, and again, this, this is going to kind of most, you know, if you're, if you're in Brazoria County or Chambers or Galveston, mandatory flood insurance, right? Um, and, and further inland, it's not mandatory. It's always suggested. Yeah. Just to let you know, you unless you're closing and get it the day you close on a new home, or even if it's a 20 year old home, but the day it's your new home, mm -hmm. you have to get flood insurance that day, um, or else it'll take 30 days. If so, if you wait a week after closing, like, oh, call the insurance agents, add flood yeah, insurance. That's a good point. It's gonna take 30 days. You can't just like look outside and be like, hey, can y'all add flood insurance right now? Not gonna happen. So, so be thinking about that, especially when we start getting into May. Um, in in around here, like May, June, it's it's wet season. Um, and then when the Gulf, you know, here comes my my meteorologist. Hat. When the Gulf, uh, when the temperatures rise and the water's warmer, um, yeah. So, so when you get to August and September, there can be some nasty stuff spitting out of out of the Gulf because the water's so warm. Um, and I don't know the jet streams and the and the. the, the you're fired. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, um, it can get pretty bad, gnarly in, in August and September with hurricanes. So, yeah. you know, have that in mind, especially if you don't have flood insurance, you, you, you may want to get it. And if you don't have to have it, if you don't live in an area where it's zone, you're, you're in a flood zone, it's actually very economical. It's very reasonably priced. So we always recommend to our clients, get flood insurance no matter where you are, then you don't have to think about it, right? You just have that peace of mind that you're going to be covered no matter what, because 
hurricanes do happen here. It's inevitable. So, okay, I think we've exhausted that topic, which is good. And hopefully you've learned something like Brett said, we're going to have more information below. But just in speaking of the weather in general, it's a very hot, humid client. I think it's more of akin to like a rainforest. So a lot of times people compare it to like the Philippines, Central America. It's very much like that. This is not a dry climate. So if you're looking for like that desert feel, dry, arid, not here, folks. But we do look awfully young here, right? Our skin seems to be a little bit more dewy and... You look younger than I do. <laughs> and I'm but actually older. But you're not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and it seems like a very temperate climate. You know, when I see averages here in Houston, oh, it usually doesn't get below 35 or not above 90. It actually seems very reasonable. But I'm telling you, summers are hot and oppressive. That's why we're indoor right now shooting this video at the end of June, wearing clothes like this because we love our AC here and thank God we have it. I feel awful for some of the people on the coast right now that are suffering those horrible temperatures and the, you know, they don't even have AC. So they're not used to this. We are prepared here in Houston. Trust me, we're not gonna let you buy a home without an HVAC system, okay? You have to have one here. Um, but overall, I would say it, it doesn't snow that often. We get it once in a while. We had that snowstorm earlier this year. Um, but really what we're known for is rainfall in general. Even if it's not a hurricane, we get on average, I would say about 50 inches or so of rain per year. It can go up from there. Um, so it's definitely a very wet climate. Um, a lot of times people come here from California like, it's raining again. I need, you should probably have an umbrella galoshes just saying and it can turn on a dime it can be sunny then rain sunny right yeah. have you seen it like it's just so bizarre yeah just driving over here it was raining like heck in Sugarland and even southwest houston yeah. and like on the beltway it's like i'm out running it another thing tornadoes oh okay you can outrun them just kidding just kidding that's like the one thing you don't say um but i mean i've never heard of a tornado going over 60 and most vehicles these days do that's a whole nother video actually it's not but Anyway, the, what I'm getting at is there are a plethora of different type of weather events, and yeah. the one thing in common is having a plan and yes. having. They always used to call like a like um, all my military friends have like those those bug out bags mm -hmm. in case they have to leave, and you know they have a backpack full of like batteries, weapons, ammo, communications, what, radios, and okay, cool. Um, I have another friend that's like I want a bug back bag. He's like because most of the time you're mobile, you're in your vehicle. And you need to get your way back home to your family. If, if there's a, you know, roads are closed or the flooding or, God forbid, you're, you you know, you go down a road and your car gets water and, it gets, and yeah. you have to you, you need to ditch your car. You know, so some people have backpacks or little bags in their trunk, mm -hmm. um, batteries, weather service radios, things, um, you know, I wouldn't say leave cash in your trunk, but, you know, having a little reserve of cash. Yeah. Um, is always probably a good idea no matter who you are, where you're at, you know. Um, yeah, because when electricity's out, you can't use credit cards. This yeah. happened to people here. Yeah, recently. you don't necessarily want to be going to ATMs at the corners in the middle of the night. Um, yeah. You know, so um, just a few of those things. So we'll, we'll, we'll put this list on it. Yeah. But again, this isn't just for hurricanes, but since it is June and we are entering that season, mm -hmm. we wanted to, to have this public service announcement. And um, yeah, I think I've said everything I want. Uh, yeah. And... On September 1st, in the state of Texas, you will no longer need a license to carry or concealed handgun license. You will be able to carry if you're a law-abiding citizen and not precluded from um, owning a weapon or carrying a handgun um, by, by the courts, or you're not an official gang member or organized crime um, affiliate, you will have the right to have a handgun, um, not only in your car, in your home, but in public places that allow concealed Handguns. I love how you um, work this into the weather update. Well, it, but it's I'm, eight, I'm, eight if you're hand, driving right? on the roads overnight yeah. with a family, it's not the worst idea. Um, if you decide that, that that is your right and you want to exercise it, um, but if you go to different states, you want to make sure that there's reciprocity. If you have a license to carry, because the the rule for September first that the governor just signed um, is for Texas only. If you don't have a license, that would be for Texas only. If you're going to Louisiana or That's another neighboring state to go visit family. Obviously in your vehicle, I don't think there's a problem, but you can't get out of your vehicle and walk up to the Piggly Wiggly um, in Louisiana if you're going there, unless they have the same um, no license required statute. Um, and if they do have that, you wanna make sure that your license has reciprocity. Uh, I think we have like 30 something states that do recognize yeah. the Texas I'm not sure the latest one, but but that's called reciprocity. So just know your rules, know, know, know your governing laws of the places you're visiting, the places you're leaving, the places you're in. 
But um, other than that, um, I'm so glad we do these videos because I inevitably learn something every week. So and I inevitably they... make up stuff. So <laughs> there you go. But that's hopefully not one of them. But um, anyway, so so just be prepared, have a plan, and get you a bag of uh, or get you a little, you know. You know, batteries, get a bag these, that doesn't have a tear in it. Documents, yes, yes. And get a bag that doesn't have a hole in the bottom where all your batteries fall out. You pick up the bag and they're still in the corner. You get on the road and there's nothing in there. <laughs> Those will be in the outtakes. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next week. Bye, guys.